This is the plaintiff, Greg Hagler. He says he transports vehicles to make some extra money on the side. And he transported a wrecked car for the defendant from upstate New York to Florida. And that guy still owes him for the move. Things escalated between them, where the cops had to be called. They told him to unload the car and sue him, which is what he did. And he's now seeking the remaining $150 from the double-crossing defendant. This is the defendant, Dylan. He says he never had any agreement to pay the plaintiff this extra 150 bucks because he had to unhook his trailer or something. And he claimed he had to do extra work getting his car onto it. He paid this guy in full, the $1,100 price he was quoted for the job. The plaintiff scratched his car to boot, and he certainly doesn't owe him a penny more than what he's already paid him. He's accused of copping out on a car carrier. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $600 for the damage to his car. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says that he was hired to drive the defendant's car from New York to Florida and got stiff. Now, the defendant saying the plaintiff uh, has been trying to gouge him and charging way more than they agreed to. It's the case of you ain't no flow rider. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Mr. Hagler. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. You transport cars on the side? Yes, ma'am. So you participate in a website called UShip that puts things out for bid in order to be able to take transport people's cars from point A to point B, correct? That is correct. All right. So what happened in this case? Tell me. I placed a bid to move uh, Dylan's vehicle from upstate New York to Florida. Um, I won the bid. Uh, the money was put into escrow uh, from Dylan to U-Ship, waiting to be retrieved by me at the point of delivery. One of the agreements with U-Ship is the vehicles have to be ready to be shipped at the time that we say that we're going to be there to pick them up. When I got to the vehicle, not only was the vehicle in five foot of snow, but the vehicle had been totaled in an accident. So the vehicle was not ready to be towed, and Dylan was not able to be um, contacted at that point. Uh, Why was he not able to be contacted? I, well, I really don't know. I think he said he was sleeping uh, at the time of, of the pickup. Uh, he had a representative that met me uh, to help me with the car and give me the keys. He and I both tried to reach Dylan by text message or by phone and to no avail. Uh, we pers we still uh, moved along on getting the car unburied from the snow. I have a unwritten policy with myself that if I have to disconnect from my trailer to extricate a vehicle to get it out where I can get it on my trailer, it's a flat $150 charge. I tried to reach Dylan to advise him that this vehicle was not ready to be towed. I was not informed the vehicle was totaled. We fought with the vehicle for a couple of hours to get it out of the snowbank. I had to pull the vehicle out to the roadway with my truck and uh, position the vehicle in such a way I could winch it up onto the trailer. Um, I secured the vehicle on the trailer. I secured the uh, hood to the car and uh, I started my journey back to Florida. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's let's look at the text. And it's from you to him. Hey, the car was in a snowbank. We had to dig it out and then get it to the trailer. I had to disconnect from my truck and the trailer to pull a car out of the snow. There's going to be a $200 additional charge on extricated his car out to the road. It's taken us over an hour, not several hours, over an hour to load this car when it should have only taken five to eight minutes. So just giving you a heads up. The first time you communicate with him, it's like a done deal in your head from this unwritten rule policy that you have that's not anywhere that, hey, it's going to cost you another 150 bucks. Let me ask you a question, Mr. Dillon. What the heck happened to your car? Oh, it was, it was totaled in an accident, Your Honor. Did you ever tell Mr. Hagler that it was totaled in an accident? Uh, I don't believe I uh, ever explicitly said that the car was totaled or wrecked. Uh, I think it was just stated that the car just didn't run. Okay. So let's see what happens. Now the car is in his possession. He's driving down from upstate New York. And there is a text, and this does concern me, uh, Mr. Dillon, where, let's see. 
He sends you a text on Monday. Hey there, just a reminder of the additional fee for extraction to which you respond, okay. And then he says, and it's 150, not 200, by the way. Why did you say okay, Mr. Uh, Dillon? Simply just to acknowledge the, the fees. Uh, I didn't mean it as a terms of acceptance, but at this point, with, with, with the events that had already transpired and how the situation was already brewing, it just, uh, it, it seemed, well, like a scam. <laughs> Um, so that scared me. Okay. Uh, so you get the car down to Florida, and what happens? Uh, once he uh, examined the car and uh, signed off that there was no damage on the vehicle, he released the funds for the shipping part of it. And uh, I asked him for the additional uh, $150 for the uh, extrication of the vehicle. Uh, at that time, he said he did not have the money. Uh, therefore, I called the sheriff's office in Pinellas County for him to make a determination on whether or not I had the right uh, legally to hold the vehicle. When the sheriff arrived, uh, he told me uh, very quickly that I could not hold the vehicle for that $150, that it was a civil matter and that I needed to unload the vehicle. Um, I attempted to go ahead and unstrap the car. Uh, when I got to the last strap, I did tell Dylan to get in the vehicle, hold the brake because the vehicle had no brakes. Once I released that strap, the vehicle was going to go off the trailer, and he got a little, got a little on the belligerent side at being very uncooperative. At that point, uh, things just took a hundred. Because he thought you were saying you were going to let it go, and who knows what's going to happen. In fact, according to you, what was it, Mr. Hagler said, Mr. Dillon? Welcome back to the People's Court. So the plaintiff says that this job of driving the car or taking the car from New York to Florida was way more difficult than first thought because the car got stuck and encased in ice and it took two hours to get it out and should cost a lot more. The defendant saying, no way, a price that we agreed on is the price. Let's go back into the courtroom. I said hop in the vehicle because I'm going to let this strap go and when it does, this car is gonna end up wherever it ends up. Uh, to which I replied, I'm not gonna, do that if, if you want to let the car roll, then that's on you. And yeah, you let it go, rolled over the curb. And what happened? Um, uh, it just it just rolled back and rolled over the curb. It was it was nothing crazy, honestly. OK, I have a question for you. You have a counterclaim against him now for 600 bucks. What's that about? Uh, the hood and the fenders for the vehicle were scratched to bare metal. You're saying that these scratches on the car are his fault. Yes. Okay, why do you not see that, which is so visible, before you release the funds and say everything's fine? I released the funds initially as soon as the car got there. Um, you, but that's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to make sure there's no problems. Yes, you are, you are perfectly right, Your Honor. Right, um, all right. So on your counterclaim against Mr. Hagler, Mr. Dillon, zero. And on Mr. Hagler, on your claim against Mr. Dillon, let me explain to you what the problem is. A contract happens when both sides agree to it. A contract doesn't happen when you've got his car and then you say, by the way, I'm changing the terms because I feel like I went through too much trouble just now. So you don't get to change the rules. If you're gonna go ahead and do the work and then tell him afterwards, by the way, you owe me $150, that's not a contract. And he doesn't have to pay you that. So on your lawsuit, Mr. Hagler, against Mr. Dillon, I find in favor of Mr. Dillon. On Mr. Dillon's counterclaim, zero. So we have a zero-zero tie here in the People's Court. Mr. Hagler, the plaintiff, you just got a lesson in the law from the judge. What do you think about that? I was basically just tossing everything to the wind on whether or not I would receive those extra funds. Um, and I even offered to cut the fees in half, you know, and I told him that if he paid 75, just, you know, pay me something extra for all the extra work we had to do to get the car out to be towed. Well, you've heard the judge. Maybe you should change your, uh, your practices the next time you go trailering some cars. I will. Okay. I Good will. luck to you. Sorry you lost. All right, uh, Mr. Dillon. There's all this talk about the car being totaled. Number one, if it was totaled, was it really worth paying $1,100 to have it taken down to Florida from New York? Yes, absolutely, sir. Why? What'd you get for it? I mean, a totaled car is not worth a lot of money sometimes. 
No, you're you're absolutely correct. But um, the initial idea was to part out. Um, and whereas the judge was correct, I should have inspected prior to having it released. But without the situation evolved, the car, like like I had told the judge, she agreed that it it dropped off the trailer. But uh, I I didn't have a say in it at that point. They were gone. Uh, and so I saw the scratches, filed an insurance claim, and uh, that's gone nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, sorry you didn't win your case. That's the way it goes in court some days. Okay, thank you. All right, let's join Judge Millian and her husband, Judge John, for another edition of After the Verdict. Well, Marilyn, it seems like neither party in this lawsuit really took the basic steps that they should have taken to protect themselves at the beginning of the transaction. In other words, the guy who's going to ship the car, who was the plaintiff here, uh, he could have taken photographs, he could have walked around and done a better inspection. And again, on the other end, it seems like uh, the ball was dropped as well. Yeah, he, you know, the thing is, you can't advertise, be the lowest bid, win, and then change the rules. Right. So this, I don't write down this policy. It's an unwritten policy I have. You don't get to have unwritten policies, because I might not have picked you. But if he wants any extra money for anything that he was going through, he needed to have secured the defendant's approval of it. And did you have any idea that there was a market for shipping total cars? And someone no, would pay yeah, $1,200? I, mean, I, I, I don't even, I'm not even sure what kind of car this was. Obviously, if he was able to get five grand for it, it, it was obviously. The value must be there. Yeah, the value why, must why, be why, there. Why else would somebody spend that kind right. of money to ship it? Right. Well, Mike, here's the thing. In most states, usury is anything over 10% where you can't get any interest if you try to gouge. Yeah, credit card companies can charge 18%. It's an exception. You are stuck with a lower limit. <laughs>